Hey everyone, and welcome to another weekly art video. I hope you're having an amazing day, and thanks so much for joining me on this one. Today, I'm going to be sharing a Christmas-themed watercolor tutorial. This one is beginner-friendly, and we're going to be practicing essential techniques such as wet-on-wet wet and wet-on-dry, as well as more experimental techniques such as splattering and creating a vignette-style background. If you'd like to grab my outline sketch for this piece so that you can transfer it onto your sheet of watercolor paper and get started with the painting process, I'm going to be leaving a link to this tutorial post over on my Patreon, which I'm going to be leaving open and free for everyone to enjoy. The downloadables that I've made available for this tutorial can be found as attachments at the end of the post. I'm going to be leaving this link to this post over on my Patreon down below for you in the description box. One last little thing for this piece, I'm going to be using a watercolor set that includes paint colors from both Daniel Smith and Winsor & Newton's professional line. As with most of my watercolor tutorials, I'm going to be telling you exactly which paint colors I'm going to be using and swatching these out on a scrap piece of watercolor paper so that you can see what these different paint colors look like on paper and you can choose whichever colors you have available that are most similar to the ones that I'm going to be using and your piece is going to turn out great. All right, so with all that said, let's go ahead and jump straight in. All right, everyone, so these are my first color mixtures that I wanted to make sure to have ready in order to get started with the painting process. So I am going to be working with very specific colors here, and whenever my color mixtures run out, I'm gonna make sure to reach out for those same colors that I was using before and just make more of whatever color mixture it is that I run out of. This right here is what I'm gonna be using for my background, which is a mixture of cobalt blue and deep scarlet. This is Windsor Lemon. This is a mixture of Windsor Lemon and Raw Sienna. This is a mixture of Raw Sienna and Burnt Umber. Right here, I have a mixture of burnt umber and neutral tint. This is deep scarlet. This is deep scarlet and a little bit of cobalt blue. And finally, I have a mixture of Windsor lemon and undersea green. And plain undersea green. This is the color that I'm gonna be using for my background. These three colors are the ones that I'm gonna be using for the bells. And I prepared three colors so that I can create that variety of values that's going to allow me to develop dimension in the bells. So I have a lightest color, I have a medium color, and I have a darker color. This dark brown I'm gonna be using for the little twigs where the berries are. These two colors I'm gonna be using for my berries and my bow. And these two colors I'm gonna be using for the leaves. So I have everything that I need, and you can see how I've repeated colors in some of my mixtures, which is gonna help me arrive at a more integrated and harmonious look at the end. So once again, cobalt blue, Windsor lemon, Windsor lemon plus raw sienna, raw sienna plus burnt umber, burnt umber plus neutral tint, deep scarlet, deep scarlet plus cobalt blue, undersea green plus Windsor lemon, and plain undersea green. So just use whatever colors you have on hand that are most similar to these and you're gonna arrive at great results. I'm gonna go ahead and change my water so that I can start out with a nice clean container of water, especially because I'm gonna be doing pre-wetting in order to create nice soft diffused out effects in my background. Okay, so I'm gonna get started with my pre-wetting process using clean water. And I have these two brushes on hand. One of these is a one inch flat brush, and this one right here is a round brush in size 10. What I'm gonna be pre-wetting here is everything except for the bells. I'm gonna take my time, taking a little bit of water at a time from my container, gently smoothing and gliding that paintbrush over the entire sheet of watercolor paper, except, of course, for the bells. Really take your time with this pre-wetting process. I cannot 
emphasize this enough because it's this water content that you prepare your paper with that is going to not only help extend that time that you can continue working for before certain sections of your paper start to dry on you, but it's also going to help you arrive at those nice, soft, diffused out effects and gradients that we're going for in our background. So take your time with this process, depending on the environment that you are working in. It might take you a longer time or a shorter amount of time to pre-wet the entire background effectively and evenly. If you're working in a warm environment, a cool environment, a humid environment, a dry environment, all of those things are going to make your paper dry faster or more slowly. And it even varies in a day-by-day -day scenario. So you really have to go over everything five, six, seven times until there is some water that is just sitting on your paper because you have fed <laughs> that paper um, with enough water that it's not as thirsty anymore and the water is just sitting on your paper without getting so quickly absorbed. I'm gonna use my size 10 round brush to work in these smaller spaces right here in between the bells that I wasn't very easily able to get into with my larger brush. All right, so I've arrived at a nice even sheen all throughout my watercolor paper, except for the bells, which are still dry. I'm gonna go ahead and switch on over to my size 14 round brush, and I'm gonna prepare it by swiveling it in my container of water, and I'm gonna take the color that I'm gonna be using for my background, which is my blue purple that I created by mixing together cobalt blue and a tiny bit of deep scarlet. And I'm gonna start painting in this color in the central section of the piece, right behind the bells. I am looking for a vignette style background where the majority of this color or pigment is gonna be in the central section right here nearest the focal point, the central elements and the color becomes softer and softer and paler and paler as it moves towards the edges of the piece. Because I took time preparing my paper with that pre-wetting, that water content that I prepared my paper with is doing half of the work for me, and you can see how I am arriving at a nice diffused out effect where my blue is turning into the white paper gradually. So that's enough paint. I'm gonna remove that paint from my paintbrush bristles, remove the excess water because I don't wanna go in with too much water in my paintbrush when there is already water on my page. That can create backgrounds. Because I took time to do that pre-wetting process, I still have time to go in and manually pull this color out and create nice, soft, gradual transitions where the blue turns into paler blue than into the whiteness of the paper. And I'm just gently moving my paintbrush in different ways, expanding and pulling that color out so that the majority of the pigment stays in the central section and I'm just pulling a little bit out towards the edges here. Just a very, very pale blue. If you want to switch to a smaller paintbrush to go into that area right there or in between the bells down here, you can go ahead and do that. My paper is still very wet and workable because I took my time with that pre-wetting process. If I want to, I can still go ahead and drop in a little bit of color to deepen and darken the central section with a little bit of my blue purple because everything is still wet and workable. All right, so that's more than enough color. I don't wanna to add too, too much. I'm gonna switch on over to my size 10 round brush and clean up this section just a little bit. And then before everything starts to dry, using my size 10 round brush, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of my lemon yellow and raw sienna mixer. And I'm going to do a little bit of splattering. It's okay if some of this color goes into the bells a little bit because this is the color that I'm gonna be using in the bells. 
All right, so that is my background. I'm gonna go ahead and allow it to dry completely. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start painting in my elements here. All right, everything is completely dry now. You can see how the blue dried even lighter, which is normal. Watercolor tends to dry lighter than how it looks when it's wet. I can see that faint splattering there that I added in at the end. And I also took time to change my water because it was pretty blue. And I don't want that murky water to start affecting my brighter colors that I'm gonna be using now, especially the light colors that I'm gonna be using in the bells. I'm gonna be using these two brushes to paint in my different elements here. I have my size 10 round brush and my size three round brush. I'm gonna start with my red bow. And for the bow, of course, I am using my Deep Scarlet as my first color, and then my mixture of Deep Scarlet and Cobalt Blue as my second and darker color, which this combination of colors, blue and red, make red purple. So that's what I'm gonna be using. So starting out with my lighter color of the two in a pretty watered down state because I wanna go in pretty light and pale initially. I'm gonna go in and start painting the bow carefully. Carefully, but relatively quickly because things start drying when we're painting with watercolor pretty quickly, especially when we're painting on dry paper. But I'm gonna go in and start dropping in my red purple in some sections here and there so that since this first layer, I'm already starting to develop a variety not only in hue but also in value, which is gonna help me add dimension into the bow. I tried to add a little bit of asymmetry into this bow. This whole uh, little composition was created from imagination, so I'm not really looking at any specific reference photo or anything like that. I'm just going by what I know to be true about this kind of element or object. That's my initial layer right here, doing a little bit of lifting using the clean and slightly damp bristles of my paintbrush to remove excess water slash paint from wherever I need to, if you need to. And you can see how through using a couple of different colors, I was able to start developing a variety of values. What I mean is some sections look lighter, other sections look darker, and this starts creating a little bit of a sense of dimension in that element without really doing much work at all. So I'm gonna move on to another part of the piece while I allow that to dry. I'm gonna switch on over to my size three round brush and I'm gonna start painting in the berries. And for the berries, I'm using the same colors that I was using before my Deep Scarlet by itself, and my Deep Scarlet plus Cobalt Blue to deepen and darken certain areas. These are very small shapes. But even within these, you can see how I'm trying to leave a little highlight shape. And even in these very small shapes, I wanna use both of my colors. So I go in initially with my lighter color in a pretty watered down state, which is my plain red with water added in. And then if I want to drop in a tiny bit of my darker color, which is the red plus the cobalt blue, I can drop it into certain little teeny tiny sections here and there. Of course, because these little berry shapes are so small, we need to make sure that we are staying on top of water control as we're painting in these very small shapes. And you can see how I'm constantly helping myself with my absorbent towel, dabbing the tip of my paintbrush on my absorbent towel as needed to remove excess water and paint from my paintbrush bristles as I go. Having an absorbent towel on hand when painting with watercolor is essential. And 
and I continue painting the berries in the bottom of my piece. First with my lighter color, and then if I want to darken certain little sections, drop in a teeny tiny bit of the second color, and continue with the next berry. Doing my best to leave those teeny tiny sections of paper shining through, uncovered by these reds so that I can create a sense of highlight if not in every single berry, in the majority of them. I'm now going to get started with painting in the first layer in my bells. And for this, I'm going to use my size 10 round brush. Going in with the lightest color of the group that I have prepared for the bells first and making my way towards the darker color. So the colors that I have prepared for the bells are Windsor Lemon, then Windsor Lemon plus Raw Sienna, then raw sienna plus burnt umber. So I'm going to go in that sequence. The moment that I feel I've placed enough color on my paper, I remove that color from my paintbrush bristles and I go in with just water in my paintbrush and run my paintbrush bristles over everything with just a little bit of water in my paintbrush to soften that color and simultaneously keep the whole shape wetter for longer. Now you can see how I didn't add in any paint into that section and that is because that is a highlight that I want to keep protected. So now that I have my first color in, I can go ahead and start dropping in my next darker color which is my Windsor Lemon plus my Raw Sienna. Going in and dropping in some of that color into sections that I want to darken a little bit. Thinking of the three-dimensional structure of this spell and how the light is hitting the bell from the right at the same time. If I want to do some lifting, I can go in and absorb some of that excess pigment back up. And before everything starts to dry, I go in with my third darker color, which is my raw sienna plus burnt umber mixture. And I drop it into sections that I just want to push darker values in a little bit more. Now all of this has been created from imagination. I'm not looking at any specific reference photo or anything. So I am just bringing to mind the three-dimensional structure of bells and their roundness. And I'm going by that as I am placing in all of these colors. So I have used my three different colors there. I have managed to develop a variety of values throughout the bell. That's a good first layer of color there. I can go ahead and remove the color from my paintbrush bristles and soften the edges of my highlight by going in with a clean and slightly damp paintbrush and just running my paintbrush bristles along the edge of that highlight, which soft softens the hard edge and simultaneously makes the highlight smaller. If you have any lifting to do, areas where perhaps you have placed way too much pigment in, you can use the clean and slightly damp bristles of your paintbrush to do some lifting if you need to. Okay, so I'm going to use the exact same process to paint in the other bells. Starting with my lightest color, which is the Windsor Lemon, and making my way gradually towards the darkest brown. So I paint in the Windsor Lemon all throughout this shape except for the highlights and I dip my paintbrush in my container of water and I go over everything a couple of times, three times, avoiding the highlights again, softening that color and going over everything so that this shape can stay wetter for longer as I'm developing all of those different values in this shape. And once I have arrived at that nice first layer of color, I can go ahead and get started with dropping in my second color, which is my Windsor Lemon and Raw Sienna. And again, start dropping it into the sections that I am looking to darken. That's enough of that color. So I'm going to go in and 
help those transitions a little bit more with just a clean and slightly damp paintbrush. And then I'm gonna go in with my darker brown, which is the Raw Sienna Plus Burnt Umber. And with this one, I'm really just looking to darken small sections here and there. Remove that color from my paintbrush bristles, remove the excess water, and I'm going in to soften transitions. Maybe lift up any excess color that I feel I've added in accidentally. If I want to go back to my medium color, or even my lightest color, I can definitely do that. As long as the paper is still wet and workable, I can go back, back and forth between my different colors, but initially, I do like making my way from the lightest color towards the darkest color. Now, this bell right here, I did approach differently from this one and also the way that I'm gonna be painting this one because with this one, we do see this inner section of the bell right here and I want to paint that section separately. That is it for my first layer of color in this second bell. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same process with this last bell. So once again, I'm going in with my Windsor Lemon first. Nice, pale, lightest layer of color here. Going over everything with just water in my paintbrush now. And softening that color more and simultaneously, helping that paper stay wetter for longer by running my paintbrush bristles over everything multiple times. And then once I have a nice pale initial layer to work with, I can go ahead and start adding in my second color in sections that I want to darken. Once I have enough of that second color, I remove that color from my paintbrush bristles and I can go in to soften transitions or get rid of any textures that I've maybe created by accident. And once I have those initial values in, I can go ahead and start using my darkest color, which is the Raw Sienna Plus Burnt Umber. And this darkest color, I'm really just using in smaller sections that I want to push more. I'm gonna go ahead and soften these edges, softening the edges of my highlight here and perhaps making it smaller. There's that first layer in my bells. I can't start painting this inner section yet because this section is still wet right here. And if I start painting in this area, this color that I start placing here is gonna start bleeding into my yellow shape because this is not dry yet. So I need to allow this to dry. So in the meantime, I am going to start painting the leaves and the twigs holding the berries together. So before getting started with that, I just wanna make sure that I understand which lines that I have created for myself are twigs and which lines are going to be leaves because I don't wanna make any mistakes that I'm not gonna be able to correct as I am painting. So sometimes I sketch out these lines for myself again before getting started with something like this. As long as everything is completely dry, uh, you can go ahead and sketch in things again and it won't be a problem. All right, so I have one, two, three, four leaves and four kind of twigs that are connected to berries. So now that I have understood what's what, I'm gonna go ahead and use my size three round brush and my two greens, starting first with the lighter green, to paint in the leaves. I want a variety of values even within my leaves. So I make sure to use both of my greens, my lighter green and my darker green, as I make my way down. And when it comes to these kind of evergreen leaves, I use short, slightly curved strokes going to the left and to the right of that central vein or stem of the leaf. And then with my first lightest green in, I use the darker green, just here and there, to develop that variety of values. Next leaf, starting with the lightest green again. 
I'm gonna start down here. And then this leaf comes up. And last leaf. By the way, I do have a video where I explain must know brush strokes and brush stroke drills which help you with all these different kinds of strokes like the tapered stroke that I am doing right now. I'll make sure to link to it down below in the text section of this tutorial in case you'd like to go and check it out because it really helps you with brush control and being able to do all of these different brush strokes that help you create different textures. Okay, so just going into all of the leaves and if I feel I wanna add in a little bit more fullness into the leaf, I now allow myself to go in with the plain undersea green in a slightly more saturated state now that I have developed lighter values and create a little bit more fullness in the leaves. I'm now going to continue using my size 3 round brush and start painting in the little twigs that are holding the berries together. So for that I'm going to be using my darker brown that I created by mixing together burnt umber and a tiny bit of neutral tint to get this deep kind of chocolatey brown. And I'm going to carefully paint that in with this small brush. I'm going to jump over bow sections and leaf sections skip over that and use just the tip of my paintbrush to paint in those little twigs. I don't want to paint over anything with this brown. And if you're having trouble creating very thin, continuous lines with your thin paintbrush, I would recommend checking on the consistency of your paint mixture. Make sure that it has enough water and paint in it because otherwise you're just going to be creating dry brushing effects and you're not going to be able to create um, longer thin lines with your paintbrush. Okay so this twig here goes up and behind these leaves. I just want to make sure that it looks like it's connected to everything over here, right? Otherwise it's going to look like it's floating. And finally I have this one over here. I think I might add a couple of berries here. So very quickly, I'm gonna remove this brown from my paintbrush bristles and go back to the colors that I was using for my berries, which were the Deep Scarlet and the Deep Scarlet Plus Cobalt Blue. All right, so starting with my plain Deep Scarlet, I'm gonna add in a couple of extra berries. I feel that this composition could use a couple of extra berries here. Remove this red from my paintbrush bristles. If I wanna drop in a little bit of my red purple into some of them, I can. Then I remove that from my paintbrush bristles and I go back to my brown. Connect them to the twig and there we go. So the berries are in. I'm going to use this darker brown that I created and my size three round brush to paint in this little metal thing on top of the bells. And I'm gonna use the same brown to paint in that little string for these bells. So now that this is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and paint in this bottom section. So I'm gonna switch on over to my size 10 round brush again, go back to the color mixtures that I was using for my bells, and for this inner section, because this is more of a shadow section, I'm gonna be using primarily the darkest mixtures. So my medium color, which was a mixture of Windsor Lemon and Raw Sienna, the darker brown, which is a mixture of Raw Sienna and burnt umber. So I'm just gonna make a little bit more of these two mixtures right here on my palette. So starting with the lightest color of the two, I'm going in, painting in that initial shape, running my paintbrush bristles over everything so that it stays wetter for longer, and taking some of my darker color mixture 
I'm dropping it into certain sections here where I want to create a shadow effect. I'm going to go in again with a little bit more of my raw sienna plus burnt umber mixture. And before everything starts drying on me, I'm gonna make more of this darkest brown color mixture that I was using for my twigs, which is my burnt umber plus a tiny bit of neutral tints. And I'm gonna drop in a little bit of this very dark color in the innermost part of the bell that I'm really looking to darken more. Once I've placed a good amount of that color in there, I remove that color from my paintbrush bristles and I'm going in to soften that color, to soften transitions, and there we go. So I was able to develop a shadow effect. You can go back to your medium color if you want to. And there we go. I was able to create a sense of dimension and depth in that inner part of the bell. And once everything dries here, I'm gonna be painting in that little thing hanging inside. While that bell dries, I am going to get started with the second and final layer in the bow. I am going to use my size three round brush for this because these are very small, narrow shapes. And using my deep scarlet plus cobalt blue color mixture, I'm going in to darken shadow shapes. Now, because I am painting wet on dry, I am getting sharp defined edges around these shadow shapes that I am painting in. So what I do to soften those edges is I paint in that shadow shape, I remove that paint from my paintbrush bristles, remove the excess water using my absorbent towel, and I go in and run my cleanest lightly damp paintbrush bristles over that edge that I'm looking to soften. Okay, so this is enough darkening of little sections in the bow. I'm moving on to darken little sections in the berries, and then finally we're gonna do that final layer in the bells. Okay, so after darkening little sections in some of these berries with my Deep Scarlet plus Cobalt Blue color mixture, it is time to work on my second layer in the bells. I am looking to add a little bit more detail into the bells and push dark values a little bit more. So I'm going back to the colors that I was using for my bells. I'm gonna continue using my size three round brush. I rinsed out all of that red from my paintbrush bristles. At this point, because I'm working on darker midtones and darkest darks, I'm gonna go in with this medium color mixture that I had created by mixing together Windsor Lemon and Raw Sienna. Paint in that shadow shape, and again, if you wanna soften edges, Remove that color from your paintbrush bristles and go in with a clean and slightly damp paintbrush and run your paintbrush bristles over the edge that you're looking to soften. And as long as the paint is still wet, you're gonna soften that edge. Once I have that mid-tone shape in and it's still wet, I can drop in a slightly darker version of my color mixture that has some burnt umber in it and drop it into smaller, darkest sections. Darkening this thing here at the bottom. Gonna add a little bit more roundness here at the top. Going in with my lighter mid-tone again. Even at this point, it's important to go in incrementally. So if you have a light yellow value developed there, first go in with your medium color mixture and then check to see if you really wanna go in with the darkest to push darkest value areas even more. All right, that's enough there. I'm gonna do this same work in the middle bell right here in these edges so I can round out this bell. 
remove that color from my paintbrush bristles, soften the edge, and if I want to darken some sections a little bit more, I go in with my color mixture that has the burnt umber in it, and I'm going to do that same work in the last bell, right along that pencil line at the bottom. Removing that paint from my paintbrush bristles, removing excess water, softening that edge, and going in with my darker brown. Going in the opposite side, softening that edge with that clean and slightly damp paintbrush, and making my way incrementally towards my darker brown whenever I feel I need to in order to round out the bell a little bit more and give it more structure. Right here, I'm adding a little bit more detail into this third bell using my medium brown, my combination of Windsor Lemon and Raw Sienna. Painting this in with my darker brown. And I can now paint in this thing right here. So I can go in initially with my medium brown, which is the Windsor Lemon and the raw sienna. Maybe leave a little bit of a highlight shape that I don't paint in. And once that's in, I can go in with my darker brown, darken that section at the top, All right, I feel that I need to bring in these two little lines here, down and into the bell a little bit more. And then this one down here as well. Connect these little sections into the bell better. Okay, just going in with final details here. The final thing that I'm gonna do is add a bit of splattering for final texture and interest. So because I don't wanna get splattering in my bells, I cut out this section of my tracing paper, which I use to transfer my outline sketch from my sketchbook onto my watercolor sheet. And I'm gonna use this to keep my bells at least somewhat protected as I am doing that splattering. And my final splattering I'm gonna be doing with yellow and red. Using my size 10 round brush, I load up my paintbrush bristles with some of that yellow and I do some flicking using my index finger wherever I want to add in my splattering. Less is more, there is no need to go overboard with this final splattering that we're doing. And finally, I'm gonna do the splattering with my red. All right, you guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.